My favorite fight coming up in the next two weeks. We have Gabriel Benitez taking on David Onama, the silent assassin. And for David Onama, made an incredibly short notice UFC debut up a weight class against a former Cage Warriors two-division champion of Mason Jones. And Matt, I thought he did pretty darn good. I mean, he loses that fight. All three judges scored at 29-28. And maybe you could have made a case that Mason Jones won at 30-27. David Onama was in there for every single shot, landed power of his own, defended takedowns, really was able to implement his game. Yes, he lost. Short notice, up a weight class regardless. Onama coming into the UFC, it was one of those prospects, and I even went back, I thought, what did I have to say about him coming in? I said, win, lose, or draw in a fight against Mason Jones. I can't wait to see him in his original weight class of 145, and I'm still there. I'm still with it, even after that performance. It really did impress me, even in a loss, and to me... That's what you love to see. For Onama, undefeated as an amateur, 10-0. and He was 8-0 coming into the UFC. And again, level of competition wasn't that bad for Onama. I mean, even you go back to it, his third to last fight coming into the UFC against Justin Overton. That was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt in a fight that there wasn't a guaranteed lock that Onama was going to win it. It was back and forth. Onama, near the end of it, started to land his own takedowns. And he ends up getting Overton in a guillotine and finishing him. So it was insane to see that. But with Onama, this guy can get it done. S switching his stances. He has a great check hook. He has great power. Mixes it up in all three ranges. Head, body, and the legs. I mean, again, I'm selling you a very hot prospect with David Onama out of Uganda. Training out of Glory MMA and Fitness. They've been so-so lately with their results. But I really do like the complete game of David Onama. Kid Brothers classic Armin Zarukian UFC debuts, where it's like, you lost, but no one cares, because your stock still rose. And that was the fun thing about David Onama. Like, I I agree with everything you just said and more. He looked amazing against Mason Jones, who's like a borderline lightweight welterweight, if anything. Like, he's as big as a lightweight can possibly get. And Onama did really well with the physicality of Mason Jones in that fight. And uh, yes, that's partly why Mason Jones was able to win. But if you thought to yourself, okay, if they fought at 145 and Mason Jones was a little bit lighter, then that fight probably would be a little bit more competitive. I don't think he's ever making one for No, I, I understand. I'm just saying. If Onama and Jones were closer in natural size, that fight probably would have been a lot more competitive. And it still was competitive for a guy making such short notice against the hyped-up prospect. This is the UFC doing David Onama a huge favor, though. And listen, I'm the Mowgli Benitez guy on the internet. Probably because I'm the only person who's ever said those words, so it's just by default that crown falls on my head. But for Gabriel Benitez, he has a very bare-bones game, but he is good at what he's good at, and he knows what he's not good at. So what Gabriel Benitez, what his Hall of Fame skills are, is... When you are at a really long distance with him, he will pick you apart. He's got great long distance weapons, a good one-two. He's got great kicks to the leg, great kicks to the body. But he's a classic example of a fighter who at long range is very, very dangerous. But at close range, leaves a little bit to be desired. And I keep on going back to the Sadiq Yusuf fight. And I think you can draw some parallels between that matchup and this one against David Onama. Because when Gabriel Benitez had a lot of success against Sadiq Yusuf, he was peppering the jab, leaning the two as Yusuf was closing the distance on him. I think David Onama is going to try to land a lot of those similar power shots, but the difference is Onama can mix in his kicks a lot better. Shoo. To go back to that, the one time where we saw Gabriel Benitez have a ton of success and win a fight on such short notice or on such short close range, that Justin Jane's knee, oh my gosh. But a lot of his work he was getting done at the long range and that's what forced Justin Jane's to close the distance on him. 100%. And I mean, for Javier Mendez, he's always talking about Gabriel Benitez, hardest kicker he's ever seen. I mean, listen, there's been some pretty good kickers at American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose, but Benitez, one of those guys and. He's an interesting case because two and three in his last five, you look at the win over Umberto Bandanai, which was insane. Like, that's one of the craziest finishes you're ever going to see where he slams him and finishes him. But awesome. a loss to Sadiq Yusuf, a loss to Omar Morales, the win over Justin Jeans, and the loss to Billy Quarantillo. The guys that he's lost to, good. I, I like Omar Morales. He's, he's a fun fighter. That fight was at 155. The big thing for Benitez that... He's never truly, like, on a stat sheet, missed weight and then fought. But he missed weight when he's supposed to fight Jonathan Pierce. And I have to wonder, like, backstage at the Apex this week, like, does Jonathan Pierce just give him the stink eye? Like, they're both on the same card. But Benitez, for that fight, weighed 150.5. He didn't look good on the scale. He ends up, uh, you know, his last time out, the Billy Quarantillo fight. That one was, what, six months ago? Almost seven months ago. So it's been a while since we've seen 
Benitez in the fight. So if we look at the odds for this one, Benitez open a minus 125 favorite. He's a plus 134 underdog. Onema open a plus 105. He's a minus 162. So those odds have shifted. And when we look at this one, I mean, from a topology perspective, I'll just cut to the chase right now. 442 votes, 81% Onama, 78% by knockout. For the 19% that have Benitez, 64% by decision, Matt. I think, and we know this, you talked about it. Gabriel Benitez has a particular set of skills. He does. Long-range weapons. Some of the best kicks from Southpaw you're going to find in MMA. We know this. And good boxing combinations. One good boxing uh, combination. I say so. One good combination. Which means he doesn't have good boxing combinations. When it comes up against a guy like David Onama, Gabriel Benitez really struggles against guys that can take him down. His takedown defense is incredibly porous. And against such a well-rounded guy in Onama, I see him having a really hard time. I was just about to say, we seem to both be trending towards the David Onama pick. So I guess I'll just try to set up sort of how a Gabriel Benitez win might look early on. If he is able to land a lot of those calf kicks early on like you said he has some of the better pound for pound power in his kicks regardless of whether it's to the leg body or head and if you can really get those working early on and limit the movement of david onema it will make a more of a sitting target for benitez to land his own power shots but like you said onema is well-rounded here's the thing i will say though i do expect him to still strike against gabriel benitez on thing until things go poorly i don't expect onema to shoot a takedown until a big leg kick does land until maybe benitez is able to stun him with a big shot i do like onema quite a bit in this matchup but the last thing i'm going to say about him and just sort of his ceiling overall i'm a little worried he could become like the next mark Chikasi. i don't think it's gonna happen it's just whenever there's someone who has like this kind of stellar like action hero type of skill sets that always worries me because of the fighter that Chikasi was he was never able to improve i don't see that being the case in onama but that's just always something that worries me i'm thinking onama top 15 at featherweight and it's gonna come sooner than later especially fighting guys that have been around for a long time like gabriel benitez yeah but Gabriel Benitez, if he loses this, will have been 1-4 in, in his last five. So I don't know if this will really change the career of Oneva. It's the win that you need and, and apparently the win that you want. Both of us going with Uganda's own David Onama to get the win. A guy who was able to really put on a fun fight his last time out. Didn't pick up fight of the night honors. They gave that to Gregory Rodriguez, a second round knockout over Jun Young Park. Come on. I was just going to say, like, Mason Jones versus David Onama was on some people's fight of the year list. Now, yes, it was further to the bottom of it than it was to the top. But still, a lot of people said that that was one of the best fights of the year. And they didn't even award that with being the best fight on that night. It was ridiculous. Wild stuff. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. Do you have the man from Tijuana in Mexico? Or, again, Uganda's own. You let us know. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get, get into it. it.